When we talk about the Charlotte Hornets, we have to talk about the number three pick, the rookie, Mr. LaMelo Ball. Give me your thoughts on the rookie through the first 35 games of the season. He's been something else, man. I mean, I talk to the play-by-play voice of the Hornets, Sam Farber, all the time, and we always discuss, like, I'm starting to run out of words to describe this kid. I mean, he is just something else. And the thing that people don't realize is, you know, he's only 19 years old. He has not had a formal preseason, offseason workout to go through. He's, and, you know, a lot of people in Charlotte, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to tell because this team hasn't got a lot of national recognition until the last couple of weeks with the play of LaMelo Ball. And the, the notion here was, why is he not starting coming right off the bat? You know, first game of the season, why is he on the bench? And for the first about, I believe, I think it was 13, 14 games, he was coming off the bench and he was playing a half, you know, 30 minutes, half hour of game time. So he was getting a lot of playing time, but then just out of necessity, he became the starter. And since he's become the starter, I mean, he's averaging almost 21 points a game, 6.2 rebounds, six and 6.7 assists. I mean, those are numbers that rookies have not put up since Oscar Robertson. And they are wow. just, it is just unreal what he's been able to accomplish here in the queen city And I'm really excited to see where he's going to be able to go. Again, he's only 19. He's going to fill into his body. We don't even know if he's done growing yet. I mean, he's 6'7". Maybe he grows another inch or two. And he's getting a lot of comparisons right now to a young Magic Johnson. And I don't don't want to stretch it that far yet. I mean, we still got a ways to go to compare him to one of the greats like that. But, you know, he's just been phenomenal to watch. And his teammates love him. And that's the really important thing. He passes the ball. He enjoys passing the ball. And when you play with a guy that's able to pass the ball like that and is willing to give you shots, your teammates are going to like you and they're going to appreciate you a lot more. And it's just going to pick up that camaraderie in a season where it's really hard to do that. I mean, when you go on the road, you're isolated in your hotel room. You're not going out, going to have team dinners or anything like that. You don't bond in a traditional sense. So the fact that he's been doing this in a year like this with a pandemic going on is really unique, I think. LaMelo is actually in fourth for steals in the entire league as a rookie. That's insane. Um, did you think that him having maybe a little bit of time overseas helped prepare him for the NBA? Yeah, he's talked about that a lot. I mean, the the one knock on him coming into the draft was his shooting. When he was in Australia last year, he only shot 25% from beyond the arc. This season, though, he's shooting 45% as a starter from three-point land. So it's been a really impressive – stretch for him to get to that point where he's been shooting in three but his steals and it's all effort on that aspect I mean he plays with a ton of energy he's been playing a lot of minutes lately too and they just got done with a really tough west coast swing where they had to go out and play Utah then they had to go play Phoenix and ended up beating the Suns who now have the second best record in the NBA had to go play Golden Golden State yeah they had to go play Golden State they had to go play um Sacramento, and then they had to play Portland on a back-to-back at 10.30 Eastern time. And then they finished it off with Minnesota, so it was a little bit easier. But, you know, that's, that six-game road trip was tough, and he's been playing a lot of minutes. And the fact that he's bringing that energy on the defensive side of the floor is something else. And a lot of it is anticipation. You know, he if the ball goes up on the offensive side of the glass, he'll hang around the backcourt, for or the frontcourt, I should say, for a couple of seconds just to see if there's a lazy pass or anything like that. But he does a really good job on his switches – coming back from the from the backside, kind of reaching around, poking the ball through to get those easy steals. But he's been great defensively, and a lot of that energy has just transitioned over to the offensive side of the glass as well. When you look at the Charlotte Hornets' backcourt right now, since LaMelo's entered the starting lineup, Terry Rozier has been awesome. Now, when you talked about drafting LaMelo Ball, one of the main questions about the Hornets was, what's gonna, what, how are they going to manage – This backcourt, obviously, Devontae Graham was someone that stepped up last year. Rozier has been pretty solid. And then you have the rookie there uh, in the mellow ball. Again, those two have been awesome since they've been together in the backcourt since, I believe, February 1st when the mellow entered the starting lineup. Uh, Just give me a little breakdown about how these two have been meshing together in the Hornets backcourt. They've been doing a really good job. The problem now is... You know, how are we how are the Hornets going to be able to manage all of these players when they're healthy? Because Lamella became a starter out of necessity, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, where uh, Devontae Graham goes down. He was the starting point guard to start this season. The Hornets have used, I think it's something crazy. I want to say I think it's been 12 starting lineups this season through 35 games. So they haven't had a healthy roster essentially all season. Cody Zeller was hurt to start the the year and they've been really thin at the at the five. So to go back to what you're talking about with Terry and LaMelo, they've just been 
a, a really good job. And it goes back to LaMelo wanting to pass the ball. And Terry Rozier has done a great job the last two seasons now that he's been in Charlotte. Ever since he came to Boston, he came from Boston, he's just done a great job with becoming kind of the man. He's been the guy that the offense has flowed through a little bit too. And it's just a sense of, okay, the, the defense cannot just key on LaMelo. And that leaves Rozier open for a lot of threes because a lot of his threes are catch and shoot. He can create his own shot, but a lot of times he's just open on the wing and he's able to bang down threes. I mean, there was a stretch in Wednesday's game last week where in Minnesota, now granted it is Minnesota and there's a lot of issues there. Uh, third quarter, he comes down and he bangs five threes in the third quarter alone. I mean, he just got red hot and he's just that kind of guy that can get – catch fire at any point. So it's really exciting to see him. And the other thing too, is I think that goes on notice is a big free agent acquisition in the off season with Gordon Hayward. So now you've got three guys on the offensive side of the ball that can really hurt you in different ways. And Gordon does a great job dribbling to his spots and creating his own shot. And if, if a team is going to try to double Gordon for some reason, then Terry's probably going to be open on the wing. And even LaMelo is really good at driving. And then he does such a good job while he's in the air deciding if he wants to shoot or if he wants to pass. Uh, his decision making is great. And I think that has a lot of that gives a lot of reasons why Terry Rozier is having such a good season as well. So you said that the fans are coming back, which is exciting because I live in Rock Hill. Um, so I'm not too far away from the Charlotte Stadium. But uh, how do you think the fans are going to embrace LaMelo and, and the team this year? It's tough to say just because personally, I mean, I, I was brought on in this position at the end of January, so I'm still very new to the Charlotte area. I did live in Winston-Salem for about a year and a half before that. And when I you know, I went to a game last year right before everything shut down, and I think there's maybe like nine, ten thousand 10,000 people in the, in the arena. But, I mean, at that time, I th they were playing the Knicks too. So it was like, you know, two not very good teams early, late February, early March. I mean, how many people are you really going to draw in a crowd like that? But the LaMelo effect has been real, especially on social media. I mean, I, you know, the Twitter account now has over a million followers. And I don't, I think a lot of that has to do with a guy like LaMelo Ball. He has this big, I don't want to say cult-like following, but he has a big social media influence. There's a lot of people that are big LaMelo Ball fans that kind of noticed when he was in Australia. And he has the best-selling jersey in Australia right now. I mean, you know, he played in Australia last year, but he only played 12 games. So it's not like he was there for a full season or anything like that. But I think the fans are really embracing this team. There's a lot of people that are still on the fence about if James Borrego is the right guy to lead this team, but he is a Greg Popovich descendant. You know, he's just been kind of working with what he has had the past couple of years. And I think now that he has a guy like LaMelo Ball and he got a free agent like Gordon Hayward. I mean, at the beginning of the year, when I saw that, you know, they got Gordon Hayward and they drafted LaMelo Ball, I'm thinking as a fan, I'm thinking, this team might be pretty decent. I mean, if they're going to allow fans, I might have to drive down to Charlotte and, and check out a game because this team's going to be fun to watch. And they've been so much fun to watch. And I think a lot of the fans have kind of embraced that too. I want to say the Milwaukee game a couple weeks ago, or about a month ago now when the Hornets beat Giannis in Milwaukee and they beat them like pretty convincingly too. I think they ended up winning by about 12 or so. And it wasn't even that close in the fourth quarter. It seemed like Giannis and a couple of the other guys on the team kind of gave up because they were on the second night of back to back. But that game, I think, was the highest rated game on the RSN in a long time. I want to say about five years or so. So, I mean, fans are engaged. Fans are excited. And I think it goes back to that LaMelo effect. Anytime you got a 19-year-old kid that's getting putting up numbers, like I said, compared to Oscar Robinson, I think it's just going to make that um, make that fan base just that more energetic. Because, again, it's been a long time since this Hornets fan base has had a lot of a lot of stuff to get hyped about. 